Okay, fantastic. All right, let's move on to the next game. He's got great games, Richard Reddy. I mean, I had a lot of fun looking through his game. So, check this out. This game was played in 1924, Richard Reddy versus world champion Jose Raul Capablanca. And check this out. This was Capablanca's first loss. How many years? Take a guess, chat. How many years? In how many years was this Capablanca's first loss? Years. I mean, come on. You can't even go a day without losing a game. Twenty-six years. Dang, that, that's a long time. Eight years. Yep. So, eight years. It was his first loss in eight years. This was in um, the year 1924. Actually, I think this was mentioned in his Wikipedia. Let me check this out real quick. Um, bum, bum, bum. Ooh, uh. Reddy defeated world champion Jose Raul Capablanca in the New York 1924 chess tournament using his Reddy opening. Capablanca's first defeat in eight years. His only loss to Reddy and his first since becoming the world champion. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so must be a good one, right? So let's see what happens. All right, so ready. Remember, this is after the First World War, he came back with the hypermodern play. He liked, he liked uh, the hypermodern games. So knight f3, knight f6, Capablanco waiting. He's saying, well, what are you gonna play, Richard? What are you gonna play? C4 play? So it seems like an English, right? Pawn to G6, Capablanca may be looking for a King's Indian. It's sort of funny that Reddy and Nimzovich were sort of the groundbreakers for hypermodern chess. And then, but Capablanca, who's like a phenomenal classical chess player and one of the most uh, amazing world champions, in my opinion, goes for a, a hyper-modern approach against Reddy. It's sort of funny. It's fighting fire with fire, so to speak. So, there are many moves to play here. G3, if you want to keep it uh, English style, pawn to D4, go back into a queen's pawn, uh, the queen's gambit style, Grunfeld or King's Indian, knight C3. Check this out. Reddy always had his own approach to things. B4. Later, the move B4 was used by world champion Vasily Smyslov. I, I know that because Smyslov is one of my favorite players. I find that um, you can learn a lot from the great Vasily Smyslov, even though he's not one of the um, the world champions that you that you may know of the most. But I, I like him because I find the games easier to understand and. The move before smells, just has the smell of ready all over it. So the move is twofold. It, it gains space on the queen side, and it prepares to challenge the Fianchetto bishop on g7. Thank you, Marshall, for 100 bits. So I actually like this approach. I've tried this in my own games several times. Uh, I didn't know that Reddy played it in this game until I saw this game years ago. And um, I saw it first by Vasily Smyslov, even though Smyslov came later. Maybe he took it from Reddy. So bishop to g7, bishop to b2. Castle. And now Reddy has a decision to make. He plays g3, which I actually like. So the only risk that white runs here by playing this way is that... White has gained a little bit of space, but he hasn't really developed his minor pieces, right? So white still has to go here and castle before he's completely out of the woods. Here, black has a lot of approaches. A5, D5, all certain attacks toward the center. Capablanca decided to, again, once again, meet fire with fire and played the move pawn to B6. You Fianchetto? I Fianchetto. Okay. The reason I don't like that as much is 
it doesn't really seem like that was the way to punish White for the opening on uh, not having developed pieces. To me, the move b6 and bishop to b7 gives White the time he needs to castle. Okay, castle, d6, d3, and White is pretty much consolidated. White has a little bit of extra space over here. He's not going to be caught off guard here. He's very close to developing all of his pieces. I like White like this much because of the space. But Capablanca's, but Capablanca's position is very solid. I can't think of any weaknesses in the position. All I can think of is White has a little bit of space. Graffin asks, what about d4 instead of... Well, that sort of defeats White's strategy, which is to keep the center intact or under control. So if he plays the move pawn to d4, that would allow Black the opportunity to take advantage of the center light squares. So I like what Reddy's doing here. He's controlling the light squares with his pawns, and then he's using his pieces to attack on the dark squares. So I like that. Knight to d7, knight to d2. Very solid play by both sides. Pawn e5, Kappa wants some space for himself. Queen c2, connecting the rooks, and again, it doesn't really seem like much is happening here, and that's because it's not. They're preparing their forces. Rook e8, rook f to d1. Pawn a5, so Capablanca wants a piece of that. Pawn a3. I like the move pawn a3, because if you go pawn to b5, you give the c5 square away, and you sort of shut down your possible breaks on the queen side. So I like the move pawn to a3. You want to trade? Fine with me. I'll capture back and I'm still going to be controlling that c5 square. Okay, pawn h6, a sort of passing move by Capablanca. Knight f1, I don't, I don't dislike this move by Reddy. Basically the idea is to transfer the knight toward the center. So I would say that the players are maneuvering right now because the position has not opened up yet. They're preparing their forces for what is to occur. So pawn c5, now... That move seems really risky to me by Capablanca. So the reason why is I want you to take a look at this pawn structure. I'm not a huge fan of this, right? You have a lot of weaknesses on these light squares. And you might say, well, that doesn't matter right now. And you might be this, this much right about that. But it's surprising that a player like Capablanca would permanently weaken his light squares like this. So, Reddy played the move b5. So now I'm ready to shut down the queen side for two reasons. Your own pawn takes away the c5 square from your knight. So that issue I had about pushing that pawn earlier, it's not my issue anymore because your own pawn blocks your knight. Two, once I get, if we trade these bishops off for one another, which is actually very possible, then all of these light squares become increasingly weaker. So knight f8 played by Capablanca, pawn to e3. The idea is that at the proper moment, Reddy can also break with the move pawn to d4, try to use this rook, queen c7, and pawn to d4 which I like. Bishop to e4 played by Kappa, Queen c3, and now a lot of trades occurred. But again, I really like White's position because these light squares, these weaknesses are not going away anytime soon. And White can trade these bishops off by just moving the knight. So a little maneuvering occurred. A lot of trades occurred, and in the end, Kappa was, sad, was saddled with this position, which I don't like. Why don't I like this position? Well, it's even material, but I don't like the airiness of the Black King. That's number one. I don't like that White's Rook is very active here. And as we've mentioned before, I don't like this light squared weaknesses which white can still look to take advantage of. Even though the pawns have gone off the board, 
Those squares are still weak, as we're about to discover. Queen c5 attacking the rook. Ready doubled up. So Ready's threatening to get two pieces for the rook. Rook to a7. Knight to e3. Queen h5. And this sort of did, did Ready a favor, because Ready wanted to Ready wanted to trade these bishops anyway. And this c6 square, nice little outpost square, protected by the pawn, he'd love to get his knight there. So he plays knight to d4, kills two birds with one stone. Kappa forced him to do it. Not because his knight was in danger. So Ready moved his knight. He offered the bishop trade, which again, the bishop is the only thing that can cover these white squares. So Bishop takes g2, king takes g2, and now here comes the knight into the c6 square, and white's pieces are pouncing. Knight comes into d6, this knight can come to d5. So white is just taking over the position. So queen e5 play, pinning and attacking. Knight to c4, attacking the queen, protecting the rook. Knight c6. And Ready is just completely taking over the squares and completely taking over the position. Oh, that's a good question. Well, somebody asked why Black didn't take the rook. It's guarded by this knight. So there was never really an opportunity to do that. So rook c7, knight to e3, and... Well, again, there are all sorts of attacks in the position, but one issue right now for the, the queen on c5 is that she's almost trapped. Which is sort of seen by the way the game goes. So knight e5. Um, somebody says the knight was hanging. So knight c6 attacking the rook on a7. So if you take my knight, I take your rook. Seems like a good trade for white. So now white moved away from the attack, and then here comes the uh, here comes the rook to the d5 square. Knight e5, rook on one to d5, and the queen is trapped. And actually, here Capablanca resigned. Um, the queen is trapped, but the game could have gone on with the move knight to c4. The problem is that Capablanca's whole position is crumbling. But I would have at least tried this. It seems like a slightly early resignation to me, but not really. Because knight to c4, you take my queen, I can take yours, which is actually the best line of play. And if you don't, I can take your knight on e3 with check. So, okay, let's look at that line. So, rook takes queen. Knight takes queen. And now the very, very, very strong move, which is probably, is certainly not the only move. You could also just move your rook away. But a very strong move dictating play is knight to d5. There are all sorts of threats within the position here. Uh, the main threats are against the rook and this pawn. So you could imagine something like this. Takes, takes, and then the rook is hanging, this pawn is coming down the board, you have a knight in Nantucket that's not doing anything, so it's gonna be a tough one, right? If you play something like this, there's knight e7, I don't even know what you're supposed to do here, right? So. This was a very important game for Reddy because, well, he was beating the world, he, you know, beating the world champion in a in a regular game of chess is always a fantastic thing to be able to do. But he also played a very nice game. Um, not every single move was the best, but to me, it's what do we judge as the best? Is it, you know? what the computer says or is that a move carries an idea 
And maybe that the defense of that said idea is beyond the capability of the equivalent human, then, you know, so what? Hi, I'm Peter Giannatos, founder of the Charlotte Chess Center. If you enjoyed these videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch these videos live, be sure to follow us on Twitch.